Hi guys, I'm Amanda, the Botanical Burnett, and welcome to my channel. So, we're gonna be doing some corms today. I'm really excited to show you guys what corms that I have already growing. And we're going to be taking some corms from this beautiful Michelotiana. Like, this thing is like taking up my focus. I am so excited to be like sharing this with you guys. Like, it has been a experiment that I have kind of fell into. I have been propagating these Zebrina, Alocasia Zebrina corms for a couple months now, back in March, I got a Zebrina for my birthday and it just wound up rotting like almost immediately after getting it. So I basically just harvested a bunch of corms off of that plant and I'm like, maybe something will happen. Who knows? I've never dealt with corms. I've never like played with them. So I have no idea what I'm doing and i've had some mild success so i'm ready to share with you guys how i'm doing it also we're going to take some corms from this alocasia so i will be able to kind of show you basically my process how i take corms and basically like how to grow new alocasia plants from a little corm i'll also go into basically what a corm is in case like you guys are like having no idea what a corm is and i'll kind of go into a little bit of like alocasia care and like what i've been doing i'll also let you know what's going on with this mother plant this the, this mother plant has just been a little bit of a hassle for me so we're gonna harvest some corms just in case we lose her and at the end of this video i'm gonna be giving you guys an update on my health so if you guys are wanting to stick around for that and just kind of like hear about what's been going on with me go ahead and stick around i don't have a lot to share but if you want to stick to the end of this video i will just give you guys some updates on basically what i've been doing and just you know basically letting you know how i am if you guys have no idea what i'm talking about and you want to know go ahead and check out my last repot with me that i'll link up here you guys can check that out if you'd like just a little bit of a trigger warning i do talk about mental health and i talk about like anxiety disorders and stuff like that so if those are triggers i don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable watching my videos so i want to make sure that I just kind of am upfront and talking about it. I really appreciate all the messages that you've sent to me and like all the love and support that you guys have given me. Like, I can't even tell you how like much it makes me feel. It's just, it's just so humbling to know that we just, you know, just sending out a helping hand and just being nice to people is really just it. I mean, that's really the, the basic of it is just be nice to people. Without getting into too much detail, for those of you who are just here for the quorums, let's talk about what is an alocasia quorum. So essentially an alocasia quorum is like a seed. So basically what it is, is it's a little bulb that sits in the soil. It grows off of the alocasia basically base of the stem so it's usually under the soil a lot of times the corms will grow and develop underneath the soil i mean that's how they do it in nature they don't have us to kind of pick them off and propagate them so the only way to propagate an alocasia is either division or with corms and essentially the division is from a corm you're basically taking a already grown corm and detaching it from the mother plant. Corms will grow roots and they eventually will grow stems. They kind of look like, like a little fat Hershey Kiss. The base of it, the fat part, will grow roots out and then the tip will just grow like a leaf and they continue to grow and they become like full plants. I think it's actually really interesting to like learn about how like alocasias grow and how like corms are so i'll let you guys know like basically what i've been doing that way if you guys want to start growing alocasia corms this is just like what i'm doing this is also kind of a low-key experiment i was kind of forced into doing these corms just because my zebrina was kind of out the door so let's talk about the corms that i have i'll give you guys an update on that because it's really like exciting uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you will know that these have already, you like I show these little corms all the time. But look guys, these are the little Zebrina corms that I took back in March. And they're growing into full on plants. So there's four in there. I know that there are two little, uh, there's actually two babies in there that are 
basically unfurled. I mean, they're pretty much unfurled. They're, you know, almost there. Then I have one, I don't know if you guys can see that in there. I have one that's starting to unfurl. And then I have one that I kind of lost in the moss. <laughs> I don't know where it is. <laughs> Eventually that will hopefully pop out. I don't know. I did see it a while ago and I did see that it was starting to root. But like I said, I mean, one day we'll just, maybe one day I'll just see a fourth leaf kind of pop out of nowhere. Um, which will be really exciting. I'm like so excited, guys. Like this is so fun. Like you get to grow plants from a little seed. Like that's the most rewarding thing when you're doing like house plants and you're like, when you have house plants, like that is the most rewarding thing. It's just to like see new growth and to be able to grow a plant from a seed. I mean, that's like, you know, the biggest accomplishment, right? Uh, I'm really excited about this, but also I'm gonna have five allocations of Rena's, maybe six. <laughs> I actually repotted this Alocasia Michelitziana a couple of months ago. So this guy, um, she was a beauty, okay? She still is very pretty. I had her up on a shelf with grow lights and this plant, when I say grew so fast and so like beautifully, it just wound up becoming too big for my plant shelf. So I did wind up moving it kind of next to my plant shelf, but because it wasn't getting the grow light light and just kind of like, it was getting a good amount of sun from a Southeast window, but it's still around like five to seven feet from the window. So it would get like, morning sun but then in the afternoon it kind of dies off so it doesn't really like it's not really light it really at all almost turns into like almost low light i had it there for a while it was blooming it was you know, it was sprouting new leaves it even gave me a flower and all of a sudden i'm now getting tiny weird growth so this leaf came out kind of wonky it kind of came out without a tip on it, which is weird. Like I was like, okay. Another one did come out the same way, but I did snip it off just because that was actually one of the last leaves. And it was just really starting to yellow and just kind of crisp up. So I'm like, okay. So then this little guy, <laughs> this tiny little alocasia leaf emerged out of nowhere. After the flower, so this came up after the flower. So I was like, okay, what what's going on here? I am thinking that this alocasia has gone maybe mildly dormant. I actually now moved it into my Southeast facing window, but it's about now like three feet from the window. So it's still gonna get a lot brighter light during the day. I mean, that's basically where most of my like plants are. It's where my Amonceras are. It's where my variegated plants are just because it gets good bright morning sun and then it gets like good medium bright light in the afternoon to evening. I hope that it's, it's gonna be better there. It's also right next to a humidifier. So it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna get a lot of good humidity. So hopefully that will just bring it back. I do see, let me show you guys. The back of this little leaf though has a big, big, like, has that like really big line. So it might be a big leaf in that little leaf. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm kind of like sad that like this plant has kind of, kind of gone downhill just because it was like one of my favorite plants. It still is, but it's kind of, a little bit wonky right now. I did repot it a couple months ago and I did check the roots on it and everything because I thought maybe that was an issue, maybe watering was an issue. And it didn't seem to be that way. It didn't really have any root rot. It had like a couple dried up roots. So maybe it did get a little too dry at one point, but it was pretty fine, honestly. Like the roots actually seemed really nice and I did notice a few corms in there, so I'm going to repot it and I'm also going to take those corms and I'm going to show you guys how to take the corms from an alocasia. That way you guys can do it 
at home. Let's start doing that. Let's take some corms. But before we do that, I forgot. I actually have an alocasia corm that I have been growing in my propagation box. When I did repot this Michalitziana originally, I did take one corm. Um, and you guys can probably see all those roots. So um, the moss actually does seem pretty dry, but I'm gonna try to remove all this moss. Oh, I actually planted this corn upside down. Cool, great. <laughs> so there was already a leaf like forming, but the roots are going up. All right, well, we're gonna have to put this in the right way. But I also wanted to make sure, you know, I was doing an okay job with this before I showed you guys what I'm doing. Here is this. Michalitziana corm that I have going. So you guys can see right there. Oop, move out of the way. This little, like, little hook thing coming out of it. That's a new leaf. So eventually, that's going to be a leaf that unfurls. I'm like so excited <laughs> seeing this, and I'm such a dummy. I don't, I didn't realize that I planted the corm upside down. So that's why all the roots are going straight up. <laughs> which is kind of funny, but yeah, we'll fix that. We'll fix that when we do the rest of it. But I wanted to put this with the rest of them. I don't know how many are in there. I didn't really count when I did it, but um, yeah, we'll see. And hopefully I have a big enough jar to get this done. Let me stop rambling and let's get into it. Let's take this out of the pot and let's harvest some corms from this Michalitziana. As I like to do, I have my beer box, my little repot beer box. I know I need to get a repot mat. I have my bucket to put the soil in, and I have the old jar with my Michalitziana corn, which I will put that in there right now before I lose him. And then I have this new one, which is a little bit wider. I have another one that's like bigger if I need it, but I think this should be fine. You can also kind of stack them together. That's kind of what I did with the Sabrina. So I think that should be fine. Let's take this plant out of the pot. It shouldn't be hard because like I said, it was only like, oops, need to move my coffee. Um, it wasn't that long ago that I had already potted this up. So I should be able to get this unpotted pretty nicely shouldn't be too hard to get out i also wanted to make sure so i did lose like i mean i've had this i've had this plant forever and the stem on it got so long that i actually planted it deeper into the pot that way the stem will actually eventually grow up roots so that will be kind of nice if it starts to do that that way it has a little bit more rooting you know, it has a little bit more roots to kind of keep it stable. Oh my gosh, there's so many corns in there. And you guys can see, so exactly what I said. You see those roots that are growing in? So there's all those roots that are growing in on that stem. I mean, I'm telling you, like, it was planted to here, and I was like, that whole stem, like, doesn't need to be like that. So I planted it in, and now we have all of those roots that are growing in. So if you have a alocasia that's having, like, really long, like, stem, you can do the same thing and just plant it a little bit in a deeper pot. Totally fine. So I have some really good corms. Uh, one actually just fell out. I just want to make sure that, like, None of them are in here, um, but I just had one. So you're going to see they're going to look like this. Ugly, little brown, like whatever. This one I hope isn't rotted. No, it feels fine. As long as I feel firm, you'll kind of want to squeeze it. If it feels firm, then it's good. So I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to show you in a minute how to clean them. Um, so let me put this aside as well so I can show you kind of what they look like on an alocasia. And they're kind of they're kind of falling off. I just have another one that I just fell off. 
So when you pull out your alocasia, it's going to be attached to the, like the main part of the stem. So I have one like right here. So this corm right here, let me pull this the soil off of this so you can see like how it's attached and everything. It eventually just grows off of the stem. So it's like not light enough. It like kind of grows off the stem like this. So there's this long stem. So you can kind of cut it off there. You can pull it off there. I kind of just pull it off. I know that I'm not very gentle with my plants. I should be a little bit more gentle. And I'm just gonna feel around and see if there's any more corms, which I don't see anymore. Totally fine. All right, so I don't wanna mess with the root ball too much anyway either because I don't want the alocasia to like go into like more shock than it probably already is. So I'm just gonna kind of put it back in there. I don't see any more corms. Yeah, I don't see anything else. So we'll put this back in, back in the, the pot. I need to learn how to use the, I never use the, the potting box. Like I need to like use it. I always like try to not use it. Like, but I guess it doesn't really matter because I'm so messy anyway. I get soil all over the place. I do these videos. You can also tell that like this alocasia was facing the wall because all the leaves are facing this way where now it's on a table. So hopefully the it will start to kind of fill out around and kind of be more of a, I'll kind of keep having to rotate it around just to make sure that it is good. And I'm also gonna give this a good amount of water. Um, I have been giving it some fertilizer to help it with the dormancy that I think might be happening, which is weird because like, I'm like, I don't think it's dormant because it flowered. And you know, usually when your plant flowers, that's like the biggest like, thank you <laughs> plant can give you. And I mean, it basically just means that like conditions are good and I'm happy and I'm ready to make babies. And I just like, I don't know. It just all of a sudden just stopped growing fuller growth and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and just make sure that it just is, you know, well fed and um, everything. I just got some liquid dirt, which I've been like kind of trying. I mean, I've been wanting to buy it for the longest time. It's just really expensive. Um, and I've been kind of learning how to use that. And apparently it's like amazing for alocasias because it's organic and it won't like cause fertilizer burn or anything like that. I know it's not a fertilizer. It's actually just like a plant food like nutrient, but coupled with the fertilizer, I'm hoping that that will wake this plant up. And you know, with, with also the, you know, just the conditions are gonna be even better for this allocation, I think. So hopefully, keep your fingers crossed for me that it will be fine because I love this plant and I don't want it to die, but if it winds up going, then it goes. So these corms are, you can plant them just how they are. They are going to root better if you clean them. So basically you're going to want to peel off any of this shell. It's basically like has this big shell. People wonder why I have these nails and this is why. I always get asked like, do those nails like, are they, is it like hard? I'm like, girl, it's like claws. Like you dig in the dirt, like it's fun. So there's that shell. So that shell's gonna come off. It's almost like a thick peanut shell. It's like, uh, you know that like, um, when you eat peanuts, when you like, I don't know if ever shelled a peanut. I don't know if people do that still, <laughs> cause you can get them shelled. 
Um, but when you deshell a peanut, they have this like thick, like brown shell on it. And it's kind of like a peanut shell. I mean, that's really the best comparison I can give you is like a peanut shell. Be careful not to dig into the corm. Um, usually when I'm doing with my nails, I'll do it on this on the side. You can use a butter knife. You can use um, really anything that's gonna not be super sharp because you don't need to like cut it in half, but um, basically to just peel off this corm. So this is almost done. All right, so this corm is peeled. It is nice and clean, minus the dirt. So right here is the base. So don't do what I did. Put the ma put the corm down into moss or your any substrate. Some people can root in water. I have just had good luck in moss. I put some, so I did have a couple alocasia corms that wound up not making it because I put it in a small glass of water, which was what the internet says to do. And I, it root rotted, they just mushed. So I put them in moss, put them in my propagation box and sent a prayer because I'm like, I don't even know. And they wound up working out. So this is a quorum, this is the top. So this is going to sprout out a new leaf. And then you're gonna get roots. You'll feel it, those like little like, like nodes, you'll feel them on there, but that one is ready to go. So we'll put that aside. So you're gonna put it in the old container. And then I have two more corms, and these are big corms, guys. Like the, the Zebrina corms were tiny. These are big boys. And again, if they're attached to the alocasia, they will eventually become, or even not attached, but it, even in the soil, they can still grow. If you notice that your alocasia is starting to sprout a new plant beside it, it's from a corm. Oh, I went in too deep with that one. There's also a trick that I've heard that you can like soak these in water like overnight and they'll help with the like shell. I'm just going right in it and I'm just like peeling this off. So totally up to you guys, whatever you guys wanna do. If you guys wanna be weird like me and just sit here and peel these little alocasia peanuts, then go for it. But um, up to you, I mean. So this corm is not <laughs> coming off. Like the shell is like really hard to come off. So I might wind up having to soak this one. As I'm saying this, it's coming off. But I'm like, I'll try to like put it in. I mean, I have enough of it like exposed, I think that it should root. But let me try to grab it. There you go. So, I mean, I think I have enough of it exposed that it will root, but this thing is just like, it's tough. Like I'm really, the other one kind of came off easy breezy, but this one's like really having a hard time coming off. <laughs> I may continue trying to work at this, trying to get, oh, oh, I got a good peel. <laughs> may try to get more of this off, but uh, to save you guys your sanity, I'm, and myself, I'm going to just, Put that one aside and we'll go to this one, which is, this one doesn't seem promising. Oh no, it's, uh, wow, well, the shell like just <laughs> fell off. Not 100% sure on this one, guys. Um, it just kind of, the, the shell just literally fell off. So this one, sure. Well, we're gonna see, this one will grow anything. It's still hard, so it should be fine. 
Um, but we'll see. I have the little guy again. This is gonna be the bottom. Wherever you detached it from is the bottom, the butt. And then the top is where the leaf is gonna come in. And you literally just you nestle it in like that. That's it. Honestly, that's it. I do, when they're starting to root, before they start to sprout like new leaves or stems or anything like that, I will put a very thin layer of moss over the top of it just to like, tr like a, I'm talking like you can still see the corms through the moss. I don't know why, I just felt like that was maybe a good trick that I did, but you wanna just kind of like put them in there and then that's it. That's literally it guys and they will grow little roots. So, because these are kind of fat, I'm actually going to keep that other corm in there by itself in the other one. And there you have it. So you'll see like all of the little buds are on top. So you wanna make sure that you do that correctly and not like me. But if you do it backwards, when you check on it, you'll realize that the leaf is going the other way and that's totally fine. <laughs> but that's it guys. You can cover it over with saran wrap. Um, you can put it in a propagation box. You can put it in a terrarium. Really whatever is gonna keep the moss moist. I have a cute little propagation box that I'm gonna put this in, which will be in my next video. So you guys will see like my propagation box and like how to and stuff like that. So, but yeah, that is it guys. That is my cute little like corms. And then I'm just gonna basically um, off camera, I'm gonna have to re-moisten this moss and then plant the little alocasia corm in there correctly. Make sure I put it in there you know, the right side. For like maintaining these, you just wanna make sure that they stay moist. Um, Re-moistening the moss when it gets dried is probably key. Just making sure that you just kinda keep up and just make sure that it stays moist. Once these start to grow, um, so say you put this in a jar like I have and you put saran wrap over it. Once they start to grow, I would suggest, because it's what I've been doing, is to put it in a jar like I have my Alocasia Zabrinas in because it's going to give it enough room for them to grow new leaves until they're ready for soil. I'm nervous to put my Zabrinas in soil. I want them to have at least two leaves on each plant to just make sure that they're really rooted and they're really like ready to go. It's not as a harsh transition from moss to soil, so that will be okay, but I've just been having kind of a harder time with my Zabrinas, rooting and not rooting and root rotting and stuff like that. So I just wanted to just make sure that they're fully rooted, they're fully ready to go. I will be doing an update video, so I'll be doing a video to show you guys the progress of these corms. And also I will do a video of how to repot them when it comes to that time. I'll probably wind up repotting my Alocasia Zabrinas before that, or I might just wait and do them all together when they're ready. Follow me on Instagram. I'll be showing them off on stories here and there. So if you don't follow me on there, if you wanna check those out. And I have these four corms that are going to be Alocasia Fry Ducks. Like that's, that seems really fun. Like I'm really excited to watch that like grow and like stuff like that. I told you guys that I would be doing a little bit of an update on my mental health and like basically what's been going on like health wise. Um, so <laughs> my health has actually been okay. Um, I, after I did that video, I like had a couple bad like panic attacks here and there, but they weren't as severe as they had been. And I wound up getting my heart monitor um, which was not fun. The heart monitor was just, it was more of an inconvenience than anything, but I wound up becoming allergic to the, um, the stickers on the heart monitor. So every time I would change them out, they would like burn, but it was like tolerable. But now I have like circles, like 
all throughout my chest. It looks like I got cupping done, <laughs> but I have uh, circles throughout my chest that are kind of rashes, like they're not cute. So I'll be in high neck shirts and t-shirts until then. But yeah, it's just, it's it's been, it's been fun. I mean, I had that on for 14 days. Um, it wasn't bad because I was able to take them off and shower, thank God, like, if I wasn't be able to shower, like you have, I wouldn't even be doing videos. I'd be disgusting. Like, ugh. so <laughs> I, um, I was like, luckily, luckily enough that I can take a shower and yeah, I mean, I really like my mental health kind of took a turn. I mean, I feel better. I just got blood work done today. <laughs> so, um, that was not fun. I hate, I hate going to doctors as you guys probably know with my health situation. I hate going to see doctors. So yeah, I, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I've just been, uh, I've just been chugging along. I haven't had, like I said, I haven't had any really bad panic attacks or really bad, like anxiety recently. Um, so that's good, <laughs> but I know that, you know, if anything that I've learned in the last few months that I've had this, is it comes in waves. So I'll have like good weeks and bad weeks, which again is just the, uh, you know, just the, one of the biggest symptoms of having an anxiety disorder is just, you have good days and bad days. That's like anything, any kind of like illness or whatever. So again, I want to thank you guys for reaching out and like just giving me your advice or yelling at me for not going to the doctor. I appreciate that. Um, I know that it comes from, you know, a good place and not just being like, you're an idiot, <laughs> but also I am. Um, but no, I, I, I really appreciate it. I really love seeing you guys, you know, commenting on my stuff and stuff like that. So I'm really happy to see that, but that's it. That's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great day. Stay healthy. And let me see your corms. If you guys do any of these corms, I want to see them. Please tag me on Instagram. Like I have all the socials. So if you do corms, let me know. I want to see them. I want to see how you're doing and how all these are doing. So let me know. But that's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.